Welcome back to Mental Math. Here we have an infinite sum that, at first glance, appears quite intimidating. The expression involves squared terms in the denominator, suggesting a complex series. However, the solution is surprisingly elegant. The key to this problem lies not in advanced series tests, but in algebraic manipulation. Let's focus on the term inside the summation and see what we can discover. Our goal is to rewrite this fraction into a simpler form. Let's examine the numerator and denominator for a hidden relationship that might not be obvious at first. Notice that the numerator, 2n plus 1, can be expressed using the terms in the denominator. Specifically, let's consider the difference of the square of n plus 1 and the square of n. This is going to be the key insight. Let's work through this expression. The key is to expand the squared binomial and see what we get. First, let's expand the square of n plus 1. This gives us n squared plus 2 n plus 1, all minus n squared. Now, we can see that the n squared terms will cancel each other out. And we are left with exactly 2 n plus 1. This is the crucial insight that unlocks everything. So, we can substitute this new expression back into the numerator of our original fraction. With this substitution, the structure becomes much clearer. Now, watch what happens when we split this into two separate fractions. Splitting the fraction gives us two terms. Notice the opportunity for cancellation in each term. The square of n plus 1 cancels in the first term, and n squared cancels in the second. This leaves us with an incredibly simple result. The complex fraction is just the difference of 1 over n squared and 1 over the square of n plus 1. Beautiful, right? This form indicates that we are dealing with a telescoping series, where intermediate terms will cancel out. Let's write out the first few terms of the series to see this cancellation in action. This is where things get really satisfying. For n equals 1, we have 1 over 1 squared minus 1 over 2 squared. For n equals 2, we add 1 over 2 squared minus 1 over 3 squared. For n equals 3, we add 1 over 3 squared minus 1 over 4 squared. And this pattern continues indefinitely. Observe that the negative 1 over 2 squared from the first term cancels with the positive 1 over 2 squared from the second term. Similarly, the negative 1 over 3 squared cancels with the positive 1 over 3 squared. This will happen for every intermediate term. To formalize this, let's consider the nth partial sum, which we'll call s sub n. The nth partial sum contains all terms up to n. As we saw, all the middle terms cancel out perfectly. The only terms that survive are the very first term, 1 over 1 squared, and the very last term, negative 1 over the square of n plus 1. Everything else just cancels. The first term, 1 divided by 1 squared, is simply 1. This simplifies our expression for the partial sum. The value of the infinite sum is the limit of this partial sum as n approaches infinity. By definition, the sum is the limit of the nth partial sum. Now we substitute our simplified expression for s sub n into the limit. This gives us the limit of 1 minus 1 over the square of n plus 1 as n approaches infinity. As n becomes infinitely large, the denominator n plus 1 squared also becomes infinitely large. Therefore, this fraction approaches zero. It just vanishes. The limit evaluates to one minus zero, and so the value of the entire infinite sum is simply one. From that intimidating expression to just one. That's the power of recognizing the right algebraic structure. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed seeing how telescoping series work, hit that like button and subscribe for more mathematical insights. See you next time.